Now we come to the <coughs> actual law of electromagnetic induction. Okay, after we have set the background, we have seen the experiments, we have seen the results, we have most importantly defined the magnetic flux. And believe me, it is in the same way that you define the <coughs> electric flux, that is E dot ds, is it not? <coughs> hmm? Ga Gauss's law. Gauss's law says that E dot ds is equal to Q enclosed upon epsilon naught. But you should understand very, 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 very firmly what, what magnetic flux is. What is it? Okay, it is nothing but what if you if you kind of kind of take take a surface and you see then that is the amount of the magnetic field that is coming out you understand hmm? that is the amount of the magnetic field that is actually coming out of that surface that you are observing okay nothing else in the same manner that water was coming out from that window okay so, so higher flux means more of the electric field is coming out of it. Hmm? And we have seen that that if something makes makes us greater angle, then less of the flux starts coming out. Obviously, okay. So it, it starts tending more towards the perpendicular ones. And if it becomes absolutely perpendicular, nothing comes. Nothing comes out. It you will be seeing that your your velocity is just kind of passing passing in the same plane as the area right so so we should understand that so then we come to the faraday's law faraday's law of electromagnetic induction Okay, and and at this stage, if I just write the formula, it will be hilarious. Okay, why? He said that the induced EMF E is minus n d phi d phi b. That's all. That is the law. Okay. That is the law. We know what here E is induced EMF. E is induced EMF. What is my N? N is total number of turns. Okay, what is phi b? Phi b is what we defined just now. What is my flux? Flux is flux is integral b dot ds summed over the surface. Correct. So what does it say? It says you see what your flux is at at at, at one particular time. Fine. Then you let some time elapse, you see that it has changed. What is d phi b by dt? It is change in flux with respect to time. So you note that change in flux, you divide it by that change in time, multiply it by n, you will get the induced EMF. It is that much EMF that is induced in a coil. So phi b is magnetic flux T is time fine so this is only this small this is the law that's all no, no sentence statement. nothing Induced EMF is 
is minus is n times the rate of change of flux. That's all. Phi b will be b dot d s. Yes. No, I didn't get it. D phi b upon d s. D phi upon d t. Huh. 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 Yes. Yes. But it should be with respect to this. D phi by d s is b. D phi by d s is b. Yes. D phi by d t is with respect to time. No, it is with respect to time. So, so the change in flux. You what find out the change. What if you multiply it by d s in d s upon d s? Where? Here. D s upon d s. Then this d phi b upon d s is b, so it becomes b dot d s into b. Yes. B dot d b by d t into d s. So it is again giving you the same thing, no? It is, it is, the 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 rate of change of if if you keep the area constant, then it is rate of change of magnetic field. You understand? If you keep the area constant, then it is nothing but magnetic field, and that's what it is reflecting, is it not? So this is your Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Now we'll go back and try to understand. In experiment number one, he had a coil. Is it not? Why the negative sign? That we'll understand later. Okay, that's a separate law called Lenz's law. So, so it is something like that. And what you were trying to do? What were you trying to do? You were trying to push this. Is it not first experiment? Do we remember? Do we remember that? Mm. Now at this point of time, there was some flux that was there was some flux. Why was there flux? Because there was magnetic field. Hmm? Now, now for the time being, you you feel that you think that there is say say the fields are like that. Okay, so it is like that. Now you see, this is a non-uniform field. This is a plane area. So, so why that B dot D S kind of thing will come into play? Suddenly, you push it. You you bring it here. Suppose you bring this magnet here. Now what happens? I'll draw it with with maybe red. So when the north face of the magnet is here, and so it is something like this. What happens? What do you feel? The flux will increase or decrease? Increase. increase. Why? Because the clo closer the flux lines are, it signifies higher the magnitude of the field is. First chapter, correct? So what happens here? The B becomes more. A remains the same. So B dot A will be higher. What has happened? The flux has changed. The flux has changed d phi b by d t. It is nothing but change in flux divided by change in time. With time, the flux got changed. The flux got changed. There is n. That's why there was induced EMF. And that's why the relative velocity became important. You understand? Same with the second, because it was doing nothing. It was only only another way of generating the magnetic field coil b coil b was only generating magnetic field just in a different way first was the permanent magnet the second was an electromagnet the real trick comes in the third again so so let us try to understand that in the third one what happened I'll tell you. That we'll do next. So.
so this is my coil emf is negative no emf is not something that cannot be negative it is not distance or area huh? no scalar where it's work now now try to understand when he had this big coil sitting here that was producing the field and he did not decide to move it at all did the flux change what did he do in the third experiment he just switched on and off a circuit is it not he switched on and off the circuit now what do you think would have happened when you were switching it on the current would have been slowly rising you'll understand that current will slowly rise through this or or suppose suppose it rise in one go then what was happening just prior to switching it on there was no flux in that and suddenly there was a sudden sudden flux that was linked with this so there there must be a change in flux so it is that which led to the induced emf how about the switching off part the same but thing in the reverse the manner spectrum. is it not there was some flux at time t equal to 0 there was some flux and suddenly you switched it off there was no flux fine so so from from yes plus flux or from from some flux to no flux is a change is a change and i am not even bothered what flux it becomes i am only bothered about the change i am only bothered about the change so so since there is change there is induced emf and that is the reason when he just kept the magnet like that like this there was there was nothing why because time was changing dt was there but d phi b was zero so when you kept the magnet stationary unmoved it produced no induced emf none at all so if the key was kept closed then ah, and and, that, and that's what happened zero. that's what happened when he kept the key closed just when he was switching it on and after he kept the key closed for a long time the induced emf vanished then he switched off suddenly there was a current and as he kept it switched off again the current went back to zero now you understand the reason do you understand some bit of electromagnetic induction now there are so many ways in which you can affect this change there are so many ways in which you can affect this change okay so you suddenly change the number of terms is it not you suddenly change b you suddenly change a no you have a coil you hold the two ends and you suddenly whoop, make it a smaller loop that you can do make a smaller loop area changes again you will get induced emf you understand mm -hmm. suddenly you change the area you change b you change you change n you change the direction so many ways is it not but at the root of it all is only this equation only this nothing else and if i say if you understand this and by understanding this i mean you should be able to understand the flux you should be able to understand this hmm but if you understand that the background then you understand the whole of electromagnetic induction there is only this about the whole chapter fine 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 so so from here we'll we'll take it tomorrow fine okay